Two years ago, in a quick impression video, I said the Double H Dylan boots were built like a workhorse. Today, we're actually gonna put them to the test. So let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya, and then I'll be on my way. Huge thanks to Ben and Stephanie Markowski for sending me these boots for the purposes of this video. Ben wore them for a little bit, barely any from the looks of this boot, and decided that they didn't fit and they're the perfect size for me. So thank you again for making this possible. Ben and Stephanie also enjoy my music. In fact, I have a song out on my new album, Life is for Taking Chances, called One Shot, which is about being able to trade a 45 caliber bullet for a shot of whiskey in the Old West. Ben actually makes his own ammo, and after hearing the song, he was inspired to send me one of his favorite rounds, the 4570 Government. There's actually some cool history about the 4570. It is one of the first center fire cartridges, and this one actually has a spent primer in it. It was used a lot during the American Indian Wars and the Spanish American Wars of the late 1800s. After the wars, it became a round used by many big game hunters, but it's not used so much anymore. I did find a really good article about this that you can read more at the link in the description. Huge thanks to Ben and Stephanie for making this video possible. Now let's check out the features of this Dylan boot and get into the rundown. The Double H Dylan boot is made of Old Town Folklore cowhide leather, which is really known for the pull-up that it gives, and that's when this boot shifts and moves the oils will redistribute quite a bit and you might get lighter areas than in others but it feels great nice and thick and durable so this is a good looking boot but if you do get areas that lighten that's just because that's the way that the leather was tanned we also have a beautiful r toe it's a little bit wider than some r toes that we usually see it's also 12 inches tall and features a six row stitch pattern of black and white which looks really cool down here we have a two inch composite heel which feels like hard plastic but it has a crazy thick heel cap that's nearly three quarters of an inch and that's three times more than what an average heel cap runs on western and cowboy boots so this heel cap probably gonna last you a long time you know what else is gonna last you a long time this oak ice outsole it feels incredibly durable and it's held on there with a good year welt so you can get these boots resold if you happen to wear these enough over the next 10 years or so. <laughs> On the inside, we have a leather lined shaft and they've covered the seam with fabric to sort of lessen how it rubs against the legs. So if you are sensitive with that, this is definitely a good feature in here and it is cloth lined at the foot it feels like this boot actually has a couple of different ways that you can wear it it has a removable insole that they call their midnight shock absorbing polyurethane insert which feels really nice it feels like it has some good cushion in it but under that they've actually made it so that this boot could be worn without an insole and it's a permafresh cushioned cloth insole so depending on what you were doing, if you wanted to wear thicker socks, I'll probably be wearing it with the insole because the non-removable insole underneath that midnight shock absorbing insole, uh, it's cloth and cloth insoles don't last very long. And of course, the Dylan by Double H is made in the USA, sourcing parts worldwide. And they're coming in at around $230. Now let's put this boot on and see how it looks and feels. All right, so I have the Double H Dylan boots on right now, and they feel really nice. That insole feels great, and of course, the Dylan also comes with B widths, so they have those more narrow sizes that are extremely valuable, especially if you're looking for a work boot, because width is everything to fit in a Western boot or a cowboy boot. So. Loving the fit right now. This is an 11 and a half B. Usually I would go for a 12 B. So I had to size down to 11 and a half when I was at 
Davis Trailer World, and it was the perfect fit. So that's what these are. Huge, awesome thanks to Ben for testing out this size himself too. So uh, perfect fit, 11 and a half B. The insole feels nice. It actually has a little bit more support at the arch than I usually feel with B widths from Ariat. So I kind of like that feeling and I know several of you have wanted me to talk more about arch. I'm definitely noticing a little bit more arch support in this Dylan boot. The leather feels really durable and you will really see the qualities of that pull up when I crease the leather like that. You see how it loses some color where the leather creases. That's the oils redistributing throughout the boot and that may go away as the leather ages and the boot gets older, you wear it more and more and more, but just know that there's nothing wrong with the boot if that happens after you just get it. It feels really nice and durable, like it's gonna break in beautifully though. The heel, the composite feels a little bit heavier than what you might usually feel with a stacked leather, but uh, that's okay. I mean, it's a work boot. The rest of the boot is heavy too because of that ice outsole. Here's how it looks POV. Love the look of that round toe. It is a little bit more wide round than an R toe that we usually see, um, but I think that still qualifies as an R toe practically bordering on Uto though. Overall, I really like this boot so far in this first impression, but we already did this at Davis Trailer World. What makes this video special is putting them to the test. So let's go. To begin the day, I met up with Tony from Lofty Builders, and not only did he show me the restaurant they were building, but he also made my job really easy by taking over. What's up, everybody? It's Tony with another Lofty production for oh, ya. Yeah. I'm here in beautiful Brockton, Massachusetts, and we're standing inside of the future Birdie's Hot Chicken Sandwich restaurant here in Brockton. Here's the front door. I'm walking in. There's gonna be some seating area over here on the left, uh, behind me right here. And then these are the new walls that we framed up which is right here, steel frame in a commercial setting. This is the new office space, and then this is uh, some of the cold storage space that we have, two existing bathrooms. We gotta make sure they're ADA compliant, um, which means it's uh, handicap accessible, so wheelchairs can go in and out of it. Um, so this whole restaurant is gonna be accessible to all, as long as you have money. If you guys can see all the different colors um, of the rooms back there, they used to be a salon and every room was a different color. I think one of them was a massage one in the back. But um, now all the walls are down and we have going up um, these walls behind me. Uh, the steel frame walls are in. Plumbers uh, roughing and everything. We just finished up with um, electrical uh, rough was signed off last week. And later today we're gonna have the sprinkler guys come in and just check all the sprinklers and make sure everything's gonna be safe in case of a fire because these chicken sandwiches are hot. Come on in and enjoy it once we're open. Uh, 1285 Belmont Street in Brockton, Massachusetts, Birdie's Hot Chicken. Because of insurance purposes, I couldn't work on the job site, so I headed to Lofty Homes Warehouse where they do a lot of their residential work and I helped assemble some cabinets. With one cabinet successfully assembled, it was time for me to take a crack at doing one by myself. And while I do that, I'll let Tony talk a little bit more about Lofty Homes and Lofty Builders. We manufacture flooring, cabinets, hardware, countertops, um, and distributors and suppliers. So all phases of the supply chain um, we're a part of. So if you're a regular homeowner, sure, come in to one of our retail spaces. Uh, we have one in Massachusetts and one in Texas, just outside of Houston as well. So it's a showroom open to the public um, and we have wholesale prices since we you know, are the factory. Our customers are uh, contractors. 
So as a contractor as well, I'll parlay this straight into our other uh, business, which is a uh, construction business. So we're fully licensed contractor. Plumbers, carpenters, framers, painters, flooring, HVAC. We all work together and we make uh, projects like this happen. Making it happen 100%. And it was easy work for these Double H Dylan boots. Huge thanks to Lofty Homes for letting me visit their warehouse and do an extended test there. If you want to learn more about them and their residential and commercial services, visit LoftyUSA.com or go ahead and visit any of their Massachusetts or Texas offices. Now let's get into my final thoughts about this Dylan boot from Double H. Overall, I think this is an awesome boot on the outside, but there are some shortcuts in production made on the inside. Let's start with the outside. The old folk town leather here is awesome. I love how soft it is, but how durable and weather resistant it is at the same time. On top of that, the ice outsole is awesome. Very, very tough. And look at the size of this heel cap. It's about twice as thick as many of their competitors in the same price range. This is a super tough boot on the outside. But let's talk about the inside for a second because there are some shortcuts made in production here in the USA to keep the price a little bit lower in that $200 to $300 range. The first thing that is probably the most annoying to me was the plastic heel counter, which is the inside, the support here at the heel. That's plastic, and in a lot of boots, they use a leather. That's what I would prefer, is a hard leather heel counter in here. The plastic one kind of juts out at the ankle and at the heel, which can give you blisters, especially if you wear thin socks. So if you are using this for work, definitely consider wearing wool or thicker work socks. Then we have a cloth-lined foot. So on the inside here, it's cloth, which, is okay, it's not as good as leather. So eventually it will tear and uh, isn't gonna be the best for longevity and quality, but it does keep the price down. Another thing about the production of this boot that I'm not so much a fan of is that it's machine lasted. So that means a machine takes the sides of this leather and stretches it around a last so that it takes the shape of a foot. And the only thing bad with that is that each piece of leather is different because it's a natural product. So when companies hand last boots, they're able to stretch each piece of leather to its fullest capacity. And with a machine last process, each piece of leather is stretched exactly the same. So a machine last process does save time and money, but it really doesn't help the fit at all. And I feel like this one fits much differently than the one that I tried at Double H a year or so ago. It's a little bit looser, and the instep is just a little bit higher on this pair. So if you have a pair of Dylans right now that you like the fit of, the probability of you getting another pair and then fitting the same is kind of low because they don't hand last the boots. But it does make the boot cheaper. And that's important because they're also made in the USA, which increases the price of this boot from the get. Speaking of fit, and a good thing about Double H and this Dylan boot, is that they offer B widths. So that's a narrow width. They also have the average D width size and double E. So the probability of you finding a pair that you actually like that fits your foot well is higher than other brands in their competitive price range. And that's sort of the give and take that you're getting with Double H and this Dylan boot is that you have lots of different widths, but they're also machine lasting the boot at the same time to make it more affordable to folks out there. So it's a little bit difficult to criticize them too much for that because not very many companies are offering B widths nowadays. And I really respect Double H for that. That's why I think this Double H Dylan boot is one of the top three soft toe Western work boots that you can get. It also comes in a steel toe option, but if we're talking soft toe here, I think it's better than a lot of the Ariats in the same price range. I like the outsole a lot better than a recent Boulet boot that I looked at. I also like the fit a lot better than the Tacova's Bandera, but I still like the Hondo 7875 
better than this one just because of the fit and it also has a leather heel counter and leather lining on the inside even though the Hondo rubber outsole isn't as good as the Double H ice outsole. This is probably the best Western work boot outsole that you're gonna get but it does come with a few drawbacks in the construction on the inside. They're truly workhorses on the outside though. But overall, I think this is a great US made work boot for the price. Thanks so much for watching today. Let me know what you think of the Double H Dillons down in the comments. And again, huge thanks to Benjamin Mikowski for making this video possible. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here and I'll see you next time. Peace. It's built great on the outside. They save some money on the inside, but it's still ready to rise and grind and survive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. Why don't you check out this video up here about the Tacova's Bandera boots? Or I got a video down here about some music that I did that I think you might like. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good one.